There's some good news. You don't have to change a thing. You have to change a think. A lot of things are outside of your control. By the end of this video, you'll see some thinks that you can control. First, let's make a clear distinction between circumstances, thoughts, and feelings. And then I'll give you some clear strategies that you can use to steer your thinking. Let's start with circumstances. Circumstances are neutral. Wait, 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 what? Neutral? They don't feel neutral. My circumstances aren't neutral. I hear this all the time. Sometimes I think it. But circumstances are, in fact, neutral. It simply is what it is. Now, when I say circumstances are neutral, I am not saying that they are easy or painless. In fact, sometimes our circumstances are extremely painful and difficult. But what I am saying is that circumstances are simply the facts of what is. You've probably heard the phrase, it is what it is, which can be kind of annoying depending on who's saying it. But all it means for purposes of our discussion here today is the way things are without changing anything. It is what it is. Circumstances are neutral. Most people mistakenly believe that their circumstances are what's causing their feelings. In fact, you hear it all the time. Look at what's happening to me. How would you feel if this were going on in your life? As a professional psychologist, I learned way back in shrink school that there's something called the fundamental attributional error. It's an error. A mistake and and what it is is that we think that our feelings are being caused by what's going on around us we attribute how we feel to our circumstances it's an error I recently interviewed on my podcast live on purpose radio dr. Richard Nisbet he's the author of a book called thinking he made his entire career studying how we think reason, logic. And he said that the number one error we make as human beings is that we believe what we think. Track that for just a minute. We believe what we think. So as soon as we think that our circumstances are causing us to feel the way that we're feeling, we also believe it. And then your brain has two basic jobs, to keep you safe and to prove you right. So then your brain kicks into overdrive trying to prove you right about what you already think. As long as we see that it's happening, we're in a position where we can take some choice and control over that process. Until we see it as a choice, it's not. And we just roll with whatever we're already programmed to think. So if it's not our circumstances, what is it that's causing our feelings? It's our thoughts. Thoughts. This goes back to the very basic tenets of cognitive psychology, where we have thoughts, feelings, and actions. All three impact and affect each other. We know from our clinical experience and a lot of research that's been done in the field that it's our thoughts that cause our feelings. So our circumstances happen and they're neutral. But then we have thoughts about those circumstances that are not neutral at all. Let me give you a personal example. About a decade ago, I went through a bankruptcy. This was one of the most difficult times of my adult life. I tell the whole story about that in my book, Pathological Positivity. But if you can just join with me here as my circumstance is bankruptcy, that's neutral. Wait, how could that be neutral? That's a bad thing, Dr. Paul. No, it's neutral. That's a bad thing is a thought. Notice that. The thought jumps in, this is a bad thing. What if I were to think this is a good thing? Well, how could you think that? It's a pretty good question, but usually it's not a question. It's a statement disguised as a question. How could you think something like that? It's not helpful as a thought 
for me to think that my circumstances are bad. Why? Because then I feel worse. What if I were to restructure that in my mind in a way that causes a different kind of a feeling? There are some steps that you can take to change the think. Remember, you don't have to change a thing. Your circumstances are simply what they are. But when you change a think, Everything else changes, starting with your feelings. I've got three simple steps that you can take. Before I get to those, and since you are still watching, take a moment to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell too, so that you know every time a new episode comes out to help you steer your thinking. I've got you on this, subscribe. The first step is to become aware of your own thinking. Sometimes it's hidden to us because we're inside of our own head. We don't even realize that we're thinking what we're thinking. So I'm going to introduce a new word to you. In professional psychology, we make up words because it makes us feel smart. And this is probably one of those. It's called metacognition. Now let's break it down. Cognition means thinking. Metacognition, if we put thinking on this level, metacognition is a higher level. It's thinking about thinking. Be careful with this, you can hurt yourself. But notice that you can do it. As you think about your own thinking, it puts you in a position of choice. See, metacognition creates a space. It's this space right in between here. That space is where choice exists. This is huge because until you see it as a choice, it's not. You will roll with whatever you're already programmed, trained, taught, and educated to think. And like Dr. Nisbet pointed out, you'll believe what you think. So be careful about that. Let's go to metacognition. I want you to just turn that on, okay? So you become aware of your thinking. Step two. Now that we're aware of our own thinking, we can introduce some alternatives. And for step two, I want you to play around with or consider some alternate thoughts. Here's a couple of go-tos that will be enormously powerful for you. In fact, the first one I have seen change and even save some relationships. And here it is. Here's the alternate thought. What else might this mean? Isn't that brilliant? I didn't come up with it all by myself. I heard that from one of my coaches years ago. What else might this mean? So picture this for just a minute. Your spouse leaves for wherever they're going for the day and there are some dirty clothes that they left laying on the floor of the bedroom. That's your circumstance. The thought might be, oh, my spouse is so inconsiderate. Here we go again. That's the thought. Now, how does that cause you to feel? Just think about that for a minute. Let's use the tool that I just suggested. Do you remember it? What else might this mean? Now, we're just playing around with it. We're inviting our brain to consider something different. You don't have to think anything differently, but just play around with it. So pull that thought in. What else might this mean? And then what you've done is invited your brain to consider some other alternatives. That in and of itself is often enough for you to break out of some of the negative patterns. But notice what your brain is doing now. You've just invited it to do some consideration. Well, uh, it might mean that my spouse was in a hurry to get where they were going to take care of our family. Okay, something, just notice, any different alternative thought is now a possibility. And you'll come up with some even more brilliant answers to that. But that's the tool. What else might this mean? Here's one more that you can try. And again, it's just inviting your brain to consider some alternatives. You don't have to adopt any new thought. We're just opening up some possibilities. And here it is. How is this good? 
And this is one you want to use when your brain is telling you, this is bad. Well, stop. How is this good? Now, you might get a little bit of resistance from your brain because your brain is already trying to hang on to whatever it already thinks. Remember, it's trying to keep you safe and it's trying to prove you right. So it grabs that thought and it's like, what? What could possibly be good about this? And it's not even a question. It's a statement disguised as a question. Turn it back into a question. What could be good about this? And I promise you, if you invite your brain to consider that, any difficult, painful, frustrating situation that you are in can become multifaceted. You'll, you'll start to see there are upsides and downsides if you invite your brain to go there. Just try it out. Here's the third step. And please take this one seriously because it is powerful. It has changed my life. I know it can change yours. Get some coaching. What do I mean by coaching? It's like we're trapped inside of a bottle. Everything that we experience is inside of this bottle. And there's instructions for getting out of your bottle printed on the label. You see a potential problem here? So we need people in our lives who can read the label to us. Get some coaching. You're not supposed to be able to figure all of this out on your own. When you get input and feedback from others who are capable of seeing this from a different perspective, what it does is creates new possibilities in your own mind. There's also accountability that's built in. There's so many powerful ways that you can take your feelings, your relationships, your functioning to a whole new level if you will trust those who have reasons to know and can provide some competent coaching for you. I hope this has triggered some possibilities for you. Do you remember in step three I mentioned get some coaching? If you would like a free consultation with a member of my team, go to the URL that's on the screen right now, drpauljenkins.com slash coaching and we'll set you up for a conversation where you can explore if this would be a good fit for you.